There are several challenges that you encounter when you paint white on your miniatures. The first problem comes with the paint itself. Now, like most of you, I started painting miniatures through Warhammer, and the obvious choice of paints was Citadel. And I assume that like many of you, I found really quickly that Citadel white is not all that great. Actually, this chalkiness of paint is very common for many brands, but I figured out a solution for that. Another issue that comes with painting white is terrible coverage. If you have tried to paint pure white over a miniature that was primed black, you know what I'm talking about. It is a fact that many miniature painting studios charge more money if their commissions are in either yellow or white. This is simply because it takes way more time to paint a white space marine than, say, a blue one. These two problems are somewhat related to each other since if you have a chalky paint, the coverage is either not all that great or you can see brush strokes. The last problem that I'm gonna mention is contamination and staining. For example, if you get a little tiny bit of any color into your white, it's immediately obvious. I am not gonna say that wet blending white paint is impossible, but at the very least it's problematic and I wouldn't go for it. Now, if you wanna glaze over a white layer or you wanna shade it, what usually happens is that there will be this sort of coffee staining, which you need to fix. So let's try to tackle these problems. First, you need to choose the best white paint there is. I did this by trial and error, but after painting more than 100 white space marines, I think that I figured it out. So as I already said, I started with Citadel white paint. Unfortunately, light grays and whites from GW aren't great because they tend to be really chalky. Now, even though I painted many Space Marines with them and you can use some kind of medium to make them smoother, that's not the best option. If you want to stick to GW for some reason, because maybe you already painted half of your army with a specific shade, you can use Citadel Air. In my experience, it covers a tiny bit worse, but it totally pays off because you won't have that chalky grainy finish. Additionally, if majority of your army is white, go ahead and use an airbrush or a spray can. It will be faster and the result will be smoother. But even so, there are three options that are way better than any other white paint. In my experience, you can either use heavy body white paint, white acrylic ink, or AK Interactive Intense White. Each of these is slightly different, so for example heavy body acrylics are often used for canvas rather than miniatures, but you can definitely thin it down to get smooth white that covers so, so well. Acrylic ink covers well as well and it is thin enough so you can use it just as it is. Additionally, it's useful for adding to your chalky white paints to make them smoother. The last option is to go for a standard hobby paint that is, in my opinion, the best one. I find the AK Interactive White so good that it doesn't really need anything else. It doesn't cover as well as heavy body acrylics or acrylic ink, but it's super smooth and usually two layers will do the trick. Okay, now we got our paint, so how do you paint something to be white? Well you don't. Let me explain. Pure white is a very rare color in nature, and when you look around, it's very likely that you won't find any. Even right now, when you look at me or my environment, chances are that you won't see any white. Instead, you will see various shades of gray. Also, when you are using a pure white paint, the problem is that you cannot go any lighter, and therefore, if the majority of the miniature is white, it will look pretty flat. You may encounter similar problem when painting black, but with black, you cannot go any darker instead. So when you're painting anything that is black, you are usually building highlights on top of it. The opposite approach with white can work, but I prefer to build it from dark as well. Most of the time, instead of using pure white, you will use multiple shades of gray to build depth. This doesn't mean that now you have to buy 50 shades of gray, but you will simply use your white and combine it with black or really dark gray. All that is left to do is use a simple layering approach. You can start as dark or as light as you want, as long as it allows you to build some nice volume. For this reason, I prefer to always prime my miniatures with black anyway, unless I paint something like a white space marines or stormtroopers. For those, I prefer to use a different approach, but I will talk about that later. So I will start with somewhat of a dark gray color, let it dry and apply another lighter layer on top of it. This lighter layer needs to be applied to those parts that are exposed to light. If you've been watching my videos for some time already, you know that I use this method of taking primed miniature, putting it against the light source and taking a photo. Now you can clearly see which parts are reflecting the light and which parts are hidden. This works pretty much for any miniature, as long as there is no OSL, but we will talk about that in future videos. And as you can see, I am applying lighter and lighter layers to the most exposed parts. The lighter the layer is, the worse coverage it has. 
and most people don't like that. This problem is solved if you are using one of the previously mentioned solutions, however, I think that this can be used to your advantage. If you need to apply multiple transparent layers to get proper coverage, it also means that you won't have any hard transitions between the lighter layers. Usually I leave pure white just for the edges and not even all of them. Most often you will use really light grey anyway and pure white can be reserved for something like metallic reflections on non-metallic metal. Even though I said that you wanna build your white by painting multiple degrees of grey, this grey can be tinted by any color you like. For more natural feeling on this Kitsune miniature, I will add a bit of brown and build everything with brown grey. I can imagine using a bit of blue for colder feeling or warm green for anything organic. Now this Kitsune miniature is from today's sponsor, Signum Games. I already knew about Signum Games from Angel Giraudes video and when they offered to send me some of their minis, I knew that I am in for a treat. Their miniatures have this fairy tale feeling to them, which I absolutely adore. What I like even more than fairy tales is anything anime and Japanese. And oh boy does their new Kickstarter deliver. Not only do they feature these awesome Kitsune miniatures, but you will also get everything you need to play their existing game, Legends of Signum. If you like what you are seeing, definitely check out their Kickstarter. Thank you Signum Games for sponsoring this video. Anyway, when we go back to painting white on this Kitsune, you can see exactly the same progress. I use this brown grey to cover all of the fur and start painting lighter and lighter layers towards the center of the reflections. I always leave the base mix as it is and I just add more and more white for that. Since fur can be more reflective, you can make each of the reflections more concentrated and increase the contrast. Of course, this should be lower contrast than anything metallic, but higher contrast than the leather, for example. Once more, the edge highlights can be white, but for the most part, leave them really light grey instead. And I will keep my pure white for the edge of this sword. Regarding the contamination and staining, there are multiple things that you can do to avoid it. Do you know how you should use separate water containers for regular paints and metallics? Well, you can do the same for white. It almost goes without saying that when you tint your white on a palette, you can simply replace it. But what if you stain it on your miniature? Aside from avoiding wet blending with white because it can be easily overwhelmed by the darker color, you can do two additional things. First, paint your white parts last because if you make a mistake, it's gonna be quite hard to fix. If you are pretty sure that you won't make any mistakes, feel free to paint it whenever you want, but do be careful. The second tip is for shading. If you are building up the white parts from dark gray to really light gray, you shouldn't have to necessarily go back to shade them. However, for things like stormtroopers or white space marines, where you don't mind if the armor is flat, you still have to shade the recesses. You can go for black lining, which is precise and very nice. However, it takes a lot of time. Or you can apply a wash into all the cracks and fix any spillover and staining. This method makes the shading part really fast, but the cleanup that comes afterwards is painfully slow. These days I am using an oil wash over gloss varnished miniatures because application and cleanup are both really fast and precise. Personally, I consider this to be the best option if you are painting a whole army and that's what I did as well. Now I think that we covered painting white quite well, but there are some things that you should definitely avoid when using an oil wash. And this can be seen in my other video, so definitely check it out. And see you there!